And, and I think the other, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, but a lot of the time I speak to people when it's too late, like their runway has run out. They've done all their, they've gone through their entire network and sold to everyone in the network and they thought they were doing really well. And then all of a sudden that dries up and they need sales right now, which leads to emergency button pressing, which drives the wrong sort of results, right? Yeah, random acts of content uh, or that kind of urgent need. And it usually stems from, like you said, being focused on the bottom end of the funnel because that's where, you know, that's the most immediate, closest point to the, to the sale, closest to the till, uh, an old boss of mine used to call it. And I think, um, yeah, if, if you're at that point and you're coming to a creator, I think you're already in trouble and you're pre creating stuff with a singular purpose or outcome in mind that might not necessarily be aligned to your broader brand vision some of the the messages tone of voice and the way that you actually want to articulate yourself and i think there what tends to then happen is that messaging can become a bit desperate or can come across that way or we end up offering limited time offers and price promotions and things that don't necessarily devalue the brand but they kind of catch you into that loop where people don't want to pay your full price for your service uh, and then you're sort of stuck down in that lower tier of, of things that ultimately like you say that they're, they're not going to get you results longer term and you will end up back there again in the not too distant future because you just need that slightly longer term view and to think holistically about what you're doing it's like if you're going to speak to somebody if you're going to have these kind of conversations with your subject matter experts or whatever it's like okay we need to get life out of it we need to think that people who are just experiencing it are not necessarily going to be demanding that like or, or going to go through like yeah i must i must buy now like you need to kind of think through that there was a uh, a good podcast i listened to recently uh the uncensored cmo and she wrote the book on kind of b2b marketing um during, during lockdown, uh, there's the sort of five distinct audience groups who all want different types of content to fulfill very different needs from like horizon scanners who are like your execs and C-suites and people who are in charge of steering the business through the next three, six, 12 months who are looking for industry trends and industry information versus, you know, all the way down to people who are doing the looking for ways to enhance how their operation works right now, considering vendors, considering suppliers and applications, and then through to people who are like implementing them. And they're all very different. They're all after very different types of content, which is another kind of lens to put on that full funnel. Cause I think, think buying processes are, are not linear anymore, but if you consider the people involved in that sale, uh, I hopefully should help you come up with ideas of things that you need and to consider your content production in, that, in a slightly more considered way, in a strategic way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's worth also bearing in mind that different people consume content in different formats, um, whether that's because you're neurodiverse, whether it's preference, whether it's time constraints, you know, we've seen this with, with Audible versus eBooks. I often consume Audible books. I love it. I love a book in my hand. I love the feel of a, yeah. of a book and I've got loads of books here on the side. But quite often I'm out walking, listening to Stephen Bartlett at one and a half speed whilst I'm, whilst I'm walking, you know, my son trying to get him to sleep while he's screaming at me. Um, so we, we do what we have to do, but then there's also a case of, you know, what I, I talk a lot about video content. Not everybody wants to read what you've written. Sometimes that's a preference because, you know, actually it's just easier for me to listen to something and casually glance up at whoever's right, whoever's voice in that. But then actually sometimes it's just a case of like, if I see a big chunk of text, I'm ADHD, I can't, you know, if I see a big block of text, I just look at it and go, yeah, I'm not reading that. Even if it's important, like it could be in my insurance documents and I'll just look at it and go, yeah, somebody else can read that. I ain't reading it. Um, what's the important bits? That's all I need to know. So I yeah. think it's very important to consider like all the various types of audience that you might have and make sure that you're regularly ticking boxes for everyone um, as much as possible. It's not... There's, there's limits yeah. to, to the, the hours in the working day. And let's be honest, your business isn't creating content. Your business is whatever you set it out to be. And content is an engine that, that helps guide your market and efforts and, and get you there. I've certainly yeah. seen a lot of response to things like visualizers and um, short reels from, from the neurodiverse community where they're just like, thank you for breaking that down. 
because mm. I ain't watching that 30 minute podcast. Um, much like I'll probably do with this episode as well, to be fair. It's a very complex thing because at, at, the, at the surface level, it's like, well, I'm producing things that tell people the problems that I solve and how I do it for people. And then there's, then there's the, the tactical way that you choose to do that, whether that's video, whether that's web, whether that's audio, whether it's whatever. And, and now there's a whole added layer of complexity that we need to make sure that it's accessible and, uh, and all of those things. There are myriad things to think about from the content operation and like that kind of strategy piece and working with the larger clients that I do, like they have that in house and that's a really front and center thing, but for someone who's a smaller business, like that's a really difficult, um, a difficult additional thing to, to kind of consider. And I don't know whether you have, uh, things that you do to kind of help them through navigate that challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd always encourage my clients who, who probably are at that stage, exactly as you've said, Dan, kind of trying to do everything themselves, wearing a million different hats. My advice is always think strategically about the topics that you want to cover um, each month. Think about the topics that you want to cover each month and then create a video, a longer form video of you talking about those topics in passion, in depth, and then turn that content into shorter clips, turn it into blog articles, turn it into in-depth minor articles. You know, you can then use that long form video to kind of drive the rest of your uh, market and for the rest of the month. Uh, and that for me is a really efficient way of one, getting your thoughts down, downloading your brain and, and your experience and motivations, but two, just being really concise about sticking with that topic. You can't go too far wrong if you stay within the realms that you previously set out for yourself as a theme for that 30 minute, 15 minute even conversation, yeah. um, and then drive that down into the rest of everything else that you do and only use that content for that. Well, you probably record it a month in advance, right? So you'd, you'd use that for next month's content from day one to the end of the month. I'm talking about this, this particular aspect of our business. And I think if you do that that way, then you can apply some of the principles you've talked about, Dan, about how do we start with creating some topics that will give us brand consideration, which will get us noticed. How do we you know, get people out of the feed and go, oh, right, I've never, never heard of these guys, but actually this is really good, to, okay, these are my pain points, how do you solve them at the other end, yeah. of, that, at the other end of that spectrum before they're about ready to buy? Um, so that, that for me is, is that. But like, I guess... You've also got some thoughts on how you can make your content work harder and, and stick around for longer, right? So like, it's not always about writing new content all the time, is it? No, and I, there's um, interesting research done by uh, System One. Um, 